Hi guys and welcome to the channel. Um, in this video we're going to build the typical interaction that you get when you scroll up and down within browsers like Safari. So I've got a little, little pre-made prototype here so you can see as I scroll down I get this animation happening and I get my my bar at the bottom just disappears and you can see that it'll it will stay off screen as I scroll down but as soon as I scroll up at any point it's going to it's going to come back into the frame so this is what we're going to be building in this video okay so I've already got my graphics imported to build this scroll behavior I've got a header group that's just got my the top of my of my fake browser I've got a bottom tab bar and then sandwiched in between we've got a scroll group just a standard scroll group with a long image within it just of, of Apple's website okay so the first thing that we want to do is we want to be able to detect when the scroll view is scrolling and we're gonna this this is gonna be the hinge pin of the whole the whole behavior because effectively we want to be able to understand when we're scrolling up and when we're scrolling down. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a detect trigger. And we're going to detect the scroll view. So we're going to choose our scroll view here. And the property we want to detect is the scroll property. So we're just going to choose the scroll property. So as you may or may not know, detects just detects changes in a particular property. So we're just detecting when the scroll view actually changes. So when the scrolling is, is moving, but detect doesn't tell us which direction it's going. We're going to have to figure that out for ourselves. Um, and just to talk a little bit about scrolling and the direction of scrolling. So if we select our scroll view here, and we just come over to the properties panel here. You can scroll all the way down to the bottom and there's actually this scroll option here. So you see by default, it starts at zero, which is where all scroll views start. And I can actually, if you're not sure which direction the scroll view is actually gonna scroll, um, I can actually type a value in here. So if I just type say 20, I can see that the scroll view has shifted up. So effectively we're scrolling down. So scrolling down is a positive number and scrolling up is, is either a minus number or it's a number closer to zero. So zero is our starting point. So we're just gonna set that back to zero. Okay, so we know which, which direction we're going to be going down. So going down is a positive number. And when we go down, so when we scroll down, we're effectively, that's when we want to hide hide our Chrome, hide our tab bar and our header bar. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna need is we're going to need a variable. So I'm just gonna add a variable just for this scene and I'm gonna leave it at the default number variable. So we're just gonna use this variable um, to track the last position that we tapped. So I'm just gonna call that last pause so we're just going to use that to track and, and the way we're going to work out the direction that we're scrolling is by comparing the last place we tapped with the current scroll position. So that that's going to be the, the part that's going to make this all work. Okay. So coming back to our detect trigger, we're going to add a condition and the condition we're going to look for. So we know that we did the detect is detecting that we're scrolling. We need to know which direction we're scrolling. And more specifically, we need to have a, like an initial scroll. So when we load the prototype, it's the scroll view is gonna start at zero. So we know that for sure. And we're not gonna have a starting tap because we, we haven't tapped anywhere yet. So we're just gonna use this first condition to set our initial scroll. So let's just call this initial scroll. And we're going to look for the scrolls scroll position. And we want to know when it's equal. Actually, we want to know when it's greater than zero. So we know we're starting at zero and we know scrolling down is going to be a value higher than zero. So that's the condition that we're looking for. 
And when it is higher than zero, we want the chrome to disappear. So I'm just going to go and grab some pre-done responses. These are just standard animation responses. I'm just going to paste them in here. So I'll just step through them. So effectively, I'm going to move the tab bar. I'm going to move that off screen, I am, which is going to kind of move it down, down to here. And you can see here that's 812. So I'm just going to move that off screen. Um, with the with the top header bar, I'm just mimicking the way Safari animates. Not exactly the same, but but just get the gist of it. So I'm going to take the text field Chrome away. I'm going to I'm going to turn down the opacity of that. I'm also going to turn down the opacity of the reload icon. And then I've got a couple of scales here. The URL I'm just going to scale down by 30%. So it's going to take that down to 70. And just as a as a, a comment on the origin, because I want it to scale uniformly from the sensor, I've got the origin point in the sensor for that particular layer. Finally, we've got the background layer, which is just this, this red background. And I'm just moving that, I'm just scaling that to 280. So effectively, I'm just making that a little bit shorter. I'm just scaling it to 80 on the height. I want the width to still be the same size. So this is effectively our animation that's going to happen when we hit this condition. Okay, so that's our that's our first condition completed. Let me just check. Yeah. Okay, looking good. Okay, so the next condition we're going to add. And we're going to call this if scrolling down. So this condition is going to look for when we're scrolling down all the other times we're scrolling down other than the the initial time um, which is this initial scroll here and again we're going to actually use exactly the same responses here we're just going to paste those in and we're just going to change the condition here and this is where we get our actual variables so what we're going to do is we're going to let me just like this. Okay, so we're going to set the scroll property again. So we want to look at the scrolls scroll position and we want to see when it's greater. But instead of zero here, I'm actually going to choose my last pause variable. So we're just going to switch over to formulas and we're going to hit the FX icon. And we're going to look for our last pause variable. We're just going to add that in here. Okay, so just to read through this condition. So when the scroll layers scroll view is greater than whatever the number is in the in the last pause variable, we're going to also assume you're scrolling down and we're going to make sure we animate everything away. Okay, that's that's good. Okay, so the final condition that we need to add is when we're scrolling up. So if scrolling up, okay, so for if scrolling up, we're going to again choose the scroll view scroll position, but this time we want to know when it's less. So we want to use the lesser arrow. And again, we want to choose our last pause variable okay um, now this time we've got a different set of animations we've just effectively reversed the anim animation so just for speed i'm just going to paste that in but again stepping through we just we just effectively reversed everything so the the tab bar is going to move back back up to its to its position on screen the opacities are going to reverse to 100 and the scales are going to reverse as well okay Okay, so the final thing that we need to do to connect this all together and make the magic work is we need to add a touch down trigger. And we're gonna to use touch down to grab the last position of our, of our scroll. So when you scroll, you're going to touch the screen to scroll the view. So as you touch down, touch down works on when you're scrolling as well. And as you touch down, we're going to grab that position. So we're going to touch down on the scroll view. 
and we're just going to we're going to add a, an assign response because we want to assign the value of the scroll view to our last position variable over here and we're going to select that variable from our assignment list and we're going to add a formula in here so we're just going to hit the fx icon and we want to get the scroll layers. So we want to choose scroll layer and then just type a dot and we want the scroll offset. So within formulas, scroll offset is effectively the scroll position of your scroll layer. So slightly different name, but effectively the same thing as what we were looking at before. And we're going to assign the scroll layer scroll offset to this variable. Just going to click OK here when you touch down. So if you can imagine you're going to touch down, you're going to scroll the view and then you're going to touch up. And that's when, when, well, effectively, as soon as you start scrolling, the, the detect is going to detect that there's some movement. We would have already have saved the value of our touchdown in the last position in the last, in the last pause variable. And that's where this condition will kick in. Okay, so I'm just going to rename this just for brevity. So this is going to assign the current scroll position before scrolling. Okay, so let's give that a test. Let's just um, tap our preview. Just hide this for a second. And I'm going to scroll down initially and you can see that my footer, my tab bar has disappeared and you can see the animation has run on my header and I can carry on scrolling down and it's not going to appear. But as soon as I scroll back up, it's going to come back into frame. So that looks like that's all working. And um, that's how that's certainly one way that you can build this 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 safari showing and hiding on scroll position behavior inside of protobuy um, i'm sure there's um, a few other ways to do it as well um, one thing i didn't do which you may want to experiment with is that i actually created this self-running animation so self-running by by the fact that i, I set a duration so if you actually look at Safari, you can see it actually animating as you scroll. And I could have quite easily have just kind of built that in. So have a play around with with maybe doing that as well as a, as a different kind of thing that you can do. Um, and if you can't figure that out, let me know in the comments and I can certainly do a video um, adding that behavior as well. Okay, so that about wraps it up for this video hopefully this um, has been useful useful for you um, I know some people were asking about how to do this so this is how I would certainly approach it okay so that's the end of the video make sure you subscribe if you like these videos and you want to see more of them give it a like if you think it was was, was worthy of your time and hopefully I'll see you on the channel next time take it easy Bye.